What's up, the days? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I am in the grocery store getting ready to do my grocery shopping for the Whole30 Challenge that you guys all signed up for and we are preparing to start on September 1st. Now, I wanted to get this video done so that you can go get your grocery shopping in before the 1st and you don't go in feeling scatterbrained or overwhelmed. So first things first, before you jump into grocery shopping, you want to make sure that you have planned your meals, okay? Don't just come in and think, okay, I'm gonna grab some protein, I'm gonna grab some veggies. No, already know which meals you're gonna be planning. So, what I do is, I think about, I'm usually gonna have three to four meals a day, and I think about the proteins first, because those are usually the center of my meal, and my very first priority when it comes to eating for my goals is my protein. So I'll pick four to five plus eggs, and then think about the meals that I wanna interchange those proteins for. So, I'm thinking this week for breakfast, I'll probably have eggs, of course. It's my favorite and it's usually a staple for me. Eggs with some protein and probably a piece of fruit to give me some energy to start my day. For lunch, I'll probably have some type of cob slash avocado salad and I'll switch out the proteins in that. Dinner will probably be something a little bit more hearty with some potatoes and maybe like a sheet pan of veggies with chicken. And then I have to plan out some sort of fourth meal just in case those three meals aren't enough. So you guys are gonna go around the grocery store with me as I grab everything I need and I'm gonna give you some pointers to stick to the Whole30 challenge as I place things in my cart. You guys ready? All right, so now I'm in the produce section. Now even though I usually plan my proteins first, I usually shop my produce first because it's right by the door in most grocery stores. When you come into the grocery store, you want to prioritize shopping the perimeter. So that's usually going to be the produce session. And then you're going to go to the back of the store, grab your proteins, and then usually most stores, the frozen section is on the opposite side of the store. So we're doing the perimeter first, and then we'll make our way to the middle of the store to get some of the non-perishable things that we're probably going to eat in moderation. So I'll take you through that. When it comes to vegetables, and also your fruits. My only tips are to one, eat the rainbow. Try to get as many colors into your diet as you can because that's gonna help you have a variety of nutrients throughout your week. The second tip is to eat what you love. This is not the challenge for you to necessarily force yourself to eat fruits and vegetables that you do not enjoy. This is the challenge to have you eat more of the fruits and vegetables that you enjoy. So, as best as you can, get as many colors and get the ones that you like the most. Now, I always get some bags of greens for salads. Now, this is where you wanna be careful because it gets a little tricky. You wanna make sure that these bags that are already pre-packaged and mixed up aren't creeping some of those non whole 30 ingredients into them now most of the time these bags will come with like a packet of dressing you can't have those dressings on whole 30. most of them are usually made with canola oils and sugar and that's not a part of this challenge so if you're going to get them think of taking out the of, of doing without the dressing but also Sometimes they come with some dried fruits and things, and that could be where some added sugar is also snuck into your salad. So for Whole30, you're better off just making your own. So what I like to do is, I usually don't grab these. Put this back where it came from. What I usually do is put my salad together myself. So I'll grab just a spring mix, because when you look, if you check the ingredients, it'll just say a bunch of different green vegetables. There's nothing special added here that I don't recognize. Just a bunch of different greens. And then I'll also get a lighter one. Three, I just love the crunch that a Italian blend with like romaine lettuce brings. So I'll mix those two. And then if I want to add my own onions or carrots, I'll put that in my salad myself instead of grabbing the pre-packaged ones that sneak those sneaky ingredients in. And now it's time to grab some dressing for those salads that we said we were gonna have. 
So, remember, read the ingredients. Here's two options, right? Now, don't get tricked. Just because it's in the produce section doesn't mean that it fits in. When you pick yours, you wanna find all ingredients that you readily recognize no chemicals, no natural flavors, no added stuff. You just want it to be a list of whole foods. So if you look at this one, this is the Asian sesame vinaigrette. And I know vinaigrette is one that people tell you you should have instead, but this one has soybean oil, literally says sugar, there's xanthan gum, who knows what that is. I mean, I know what it is, but most people probably don't. There is stevia leaf, and we're not doing any artificial sweeteners. So this would not be a good idea, but if you can find, this is pesame's, I think that's how you pronounce it. And this one actually has that whole dirty approved stamp on it. When you look at the ingredients, it's just some sunflower oil, which is whole 30 compliant, lemon juice, extra virgin olive oil, mustard made from vinegar, water, and mustard seeds, salt, sea salt, garlic oil. So you can see how these are all ingredients that you can easily recognize. You can easily have these all in your pantry and make this dressing yourself if you wanted to. So this one's out and this one can go in the car. Now, I was headed to the produce aisle and something told me to check these holy guacamole cups. And guess what? They are Whole30 approved. Now, I'm having tacos this week and another one of my staples when I'm not on Whole30 is Chipotle and I love the guacamole there. What I love about these little cups is when you get an avocado, you really just don't know how much fat and calories in it is in each avocado. And there could be a lot depending on the size. What I love about these is it comes in something that's already pre-packaged in, separated. So I know that every time I eat one of these little cups, it's 110. If I split it in half, it's half of that. But then also what's awesome about this one is that all of the ingredients are recognizable. So this is quick. I don't have to worry about my avocado turning brown, trying to wait for the next day to get to the rest of it. I can put this back in the refrigerator and it's going to be ready for me the next day because it's sealed. So this one's going in the cart for either my uh, tacos or if I do like a Chipotle bowl. And I'll also use it in a salad. So, to get to the proteins, we're passing through the bread aisle. It's usually on the perimeter of the store. And when I'm not on Whole30, there are things I would grab over here, but we're not having grains or anything with flour in it on Whole30, so we're just passing through. So now we're in the protein section where we are going to grab our meats. Now, when you are selecting your meats, select what you like. Now, I was thinking of grabbing some burgers because if you're on Whole30, you don't need to cut out red meat, you don't need to cut out pork unless you want to. But since my goal is to trim down and be ready to go on vacation in the fall, and most people watching this video are probably looking to get some weight off, when I pick my protein, I am going to go for leaner cuts. So it might be the difference between, say, grabbing these bubble burgers, which when you check the ingredients, it's really just your 100% USDA choice chunk, which tells me that it doesn't have any fillers or anything extra in it. But if you look, it has 35 grams of fat and 420 calories. Check this other one. This one is a grass-fed beef burger. Uh, when I check the ingredients, you see it's very simple. It just is beef, no added fillers. But this one is a lower calorie option. It's only 280 per serving and there's only 23 grams of fat. So this would be a better option for my burger. I'm gonna put the bubble burgers back. So I never checked my bacon before. This is the one I usually get from Smithfields. Um, it's about 14 slices in it and it has added sugar for no reason. I don't know why there's baked sugar and bacon. Um, sodium phosphate, sodium erythrobate, and sodium nitrate. It's completely not necessary because I've had this no sugar uncured bacon from Applegate and it's literally just pork, water, and sea salt with some celery powder to, for the packaging and preserving it. And it tastes exactly like this one. Now the only difference is you get eight slices of bacon for about $6. And this one you get 14 for a dollar more. 
So this would be more affordable, but for the sake of Whole40, Whole40, Whole30, I'm going to spend a little bit of extra and get the more natural, less uh, ingredient bacon. Now, Whole30 doesn't have any real rules around eggs. Just make sure there's no extra ingredients. And get the carton you like. Got me eggs. And Jerry's out. So we are going to skip all of this cheese. And we're going to get to butter. Now, the Whole30 butter that is uh, compliant is ghee. So you're going to get ghee, which is just clarified butter. They take some of the proteins out that basically give some people the issues with the stomach and the digestion to take it out. And so, do we have the over here? I don't see the, I think it's usually on the shelf, so we might find it in the middle of the store when we get to it. So, after much research, I did find some Whole30 approved creamers. So these lemon bars, they have three that I was able to find out are Whole30 compliant. So the original, the vanilla, and the hazelnut, all three of these are Whole30 compliant. These are made from almonds and coconut. So this is a Whole30 compliant creamer. If you absolutely can't drink your coffee black, which I recommend, but if you can't, there's that. I'm not sure how good it tastes and I'm not gonna buy it. So you guys gotta let me know how it tastes. And then over here, there is a Whole30 approved almond milk, which is the Khalifa Unsweetened Almond Milk. So this is a good choice. For almond milk, um, there's almond milk and sunflower oil, there's sea salt, there's some gums and other ingredients that I actually don't recognize. So, um, it's going to be up to you when you're looking for certain things. If you see an ingredient that you don't recognize, just look it up. Just type into Google, is said ingredient or is said ingredient Whole30 approved. But I did look it up and this brand and this unsweetened milk is actually Whole30 approved. So, there you go. Throw down your coffee. Now, this video is going to be very redundant. I'm in the frozen vegetable aisle. Here's a little tip. Frozen vegetables are not worse than fresh vegetables. And they come with some perks. So, I personally like to buy most of my vegetables frozen because most frozen vegetables are picked at their peak ripeness and then frozen so that they don't lose a lot of nutrients. Whereas fresh vegetables, they get picked and then they have to get transported and then they sit at the grocery store for a while and you're just never sure if they're at their peak ripeness. So you may get home and they start to spoil or rot really fast. Whereas frozen vegetables don't have that option. The only thing is, and this is the redundant part, check the ingredients because some frozen bags do add color, they do add flavor and they do add seasoning. So you wanna make sure that if you get a vegetable that is frozen, it literally says that vegetable, maybe some salt, nothing else. All right, so we're in the seasoning aisle. Not the seasoning aisle, we're in the condiments aisle. And what's awesome about Whole30 is they give us that little stamp that tell us that it's Whole30 compliant. So I wanna go down this aisle and see what we find. I already know some. Um, but let's keep our eye out, see if we find anything cool. Um, again, and again, and again. What you really need to do is check your ingredients because even if it doesn't have that Whole30 stamp, it may be compliant. So let's check it out. And I'm already eyeing this steak sauce, which I love. I, you know, guys know I grab the burgers as one of my proteins. So Primal Kitchen is one that I absolutely know is Whole30 approved. It has that stamp. And all of the ingredients are very recognizable. They also have this classic barbecue sauce. Do we like the barbecue sauce? Uh, it's not my favorite barbecue sauce, but if you absolutely love barbecue sauce, they do have one that's Whole30 compliant. But what I do love is Primal Kitchen's buffalo sauce. Now this one is really good and I like to put it in my salads. I like to put it on my chicken. I pretty much like to put it on all of my proteins. So this one is a staple and even if I wasn't on Whole30, I would probably keep both of these in my refrigerator going forward for that's my life because I like them that much. So these can actually go in the cart. And let's keep moving to see what else we find that we 
may love. So there's hot sauces. I think the Bravado Spice Company. Yeah, if you look. So this is a hot sauce. Another one that I like a lot. It's really spicy but very flavorful. It has pineapple, white wine vinegar, yellow bell peppers, habanero, garlic, sea salt. So this one was, was one that I was happy to find. I'm too scared to try the ghost pepper one, but it's also compliant. It's like a ghost pepper and blueberry, and then a creamy urban jalapeno. So these are very clean, low calorie, and also low sodium hot sauces. So I love these and they're gonna bring lots of flavor. Uh, and I almost passed it, but this teriyaki sauce from Primal Kitchen is also really good. You're just gonna need to add a little bit more uh, seasonings, I think, to make it hit the spot. So this will be one that you add your own seasonings to to kind of spice it up. It's a little too bland for my taste, but if I were to buy it to make like a teriyaki chicken or or some teriyaki beef, I would just add two things to make it taste good. I'm gonna put them back because I already have these at home. We also touched on dressings, but Primal Kitchen has a great line of dressings here. There's Italian, Green Goddess, cilantro lime, and ranch. There's also an oil and vinegar one. I've had this one, and then there's a balsamic one, and then also a Caesar one for my Caesar lovers. These are all Whole30 compliant, and we touched on it back in the produce aisle, but these are not in the produce aisle. They're actually in the dressing section in the middle of the floor. So you want to take your time to be able to look at the ingredients. If there's something that I haven't co covered or a sauce that you absolutely love, you can always just type it in Google and see if there's a Whole30 compliant option. But also, on the Whole30 site, they sell their own line of dressings and sauces, so you can check those out too. All right, and then finally, don't forget your seasoning. This isn't the seasoning out, but I, I spotted some seasoning here in this corner. And I like to keep my seasonings pretty um, simple, but you can still flavor your food and make all your whole foods taste good. So don't skip this part. Just make sure again, you check the ingredients. How many times am I gonna say that, right? So I keep garlic salt as a staple. Um, I love chili powder. I might put like a complete seasoning and oregano. What's great about these, guess what? They have no ingredients list, which tells me that pretty much what they say on the front is what's in there. If not, they would have a list. So an example would be, let's say the taco seasonings. So this taco seasoning mix, first ingredient is actually yellow corn flour, which we are not having. There's sugar in there, there's citric acid, there's natural flavor. This is what we don't want. So just make sure you guys are reading the ingredients list. So there is our simple, not so all-inclusive, but thorough enough grocery store visit to start Whole30 nice and powerfully. Now, of course, there's probably some things on your grocery list that I skipped. So if anything comes up or you see some cool Whole30 finds, let us know, share them so that we can make it across the Whole30 finish line together. Let's go over again what we're gonna do. We're going to plan our meals before we even come to the grocery store, make our Whole30 grocery list. We're gonna shop the perimeters for our produce, our protein, and the frozen section. And then we're gonna go through the aisles and look for any other Whole30 things that may come up, like say our dressings, our seasonings, um, and our Whole30 approved oils. Mostly we are sticking to whole fresh foods with very little ingredients, especially if they aren't recognizable. And then we are making them nice and flavorful and fun meals so that we aren't suffering through this 30 days. We are enjoying these meals. And after Whole30s, we may even opt to keep them in and replace some of our less healthy and clean options, all right? So that's all I got for you guys today. Make sure you're subscribed before you click off this video so that you can get my next Whole30 video. And if you're joining the challenge, make sure you reach out to me and make sure I have you in our Transformation Club chat. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.